Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's weekly roundup where we bring you up to date with what's been happening in the WoW PvP scene. To kick things off, we've got a brand new section in these weekly updates where we look at what's been happening within the arena scene, including our top comp of the week, along with a featured play and any fails we've come across as well. So let us know in the comments below if you enjoy this section. Starting off, let's take a look at our top comp of the week. This time, it has to go to a comp that's been doing incredibly well and even saw a lot of play in this weekend's AWC, Ret Warrior, preferably played with a Resto Shaman or Holy Paladin, although it even works well with Disc Priests and Resto Druids. Not only is this comp incredibly durable due to having a ton of instant off healing by the Rep Paladin with Word of Glory, the Warrior's toolkit is the icing on the cake, as abilities such as Stormbolt, Intervene, Overwatch and Rallying Cry, along with a few others, make this comp incredibly hard to kill. And along with being super durable, it's also very strong offensively as the comp offers a ton of consistent damage along with crazy bursts from the ret. Overall, it's a pretty insane comp and it's definitely worthy of being our first comp of the week. But before we move on, an honorable mention we have to cover has got to be the comp that won both of this weekend's AWC Cups in Europe and North America, and that's Windwalker Monk, Fire Mage, and Holy Paladin. Both Waz's newly signed method team and last year's most dominant team in NA, comprising of the all-star roster of Drake, Cerulean, Brain, and their new addition Prev, saw this comp piloted to success in both regions. Without a doubt, it's one of, if not the best comp in the game that is capable of beating pretty much anything. Next up, let's take a look at our highlight of the week. This time, it goes to the fact that many top warriors have recently been making the switch over to Venthyr, leaving Kyrian behind, simply due to how powerful Condemn has turned out to be. Condemn can easily hit over 10k on a regular basis, and can sometimes even completely annihilate your target. One of NA's top warriors, Magnus, literally did a 16k hit to finish off his target with unhealable damage. Despite this recent shift to Venthyr, the Kyrian ability Spear of Bastion definitely still has a place and will likely continue to be the optimal choice when playing with another melee into comps like RMP, where it's vital to lock targets in place. However, the Venthyr ability Condemn really packs a punch and is extremely strong into some of the classes that are currently excelling, such as Paladins, Warriors, and even DKs. It's also great into Elemental Shamans and Balance Druids, and all of this is due to the fact that Condemn deals Shadow as opposed to executes physical damage. The last key feature to mention is that Venthyr Warriors can pick up the PvP talent Death Sentence to give themselves ridiculous mobility, and although this does come at the cost of losing a more defensive build, the trade-off can definitely be worth it against anything in 2s and when facing mobile classes in 3s like Affliction Warlocks. So, if you picked up Venthyr at the start of the expansion for PvE, you shouldn't worry too much about needing to swap over to Kyrian anymore as Venthyr is definitely performing well. The final part of our newly added section covers a few fails that we've seen come across in the past week. The most noteworthy of which must definitely go to the DH's legendary Darkest Hour, which has been bugged on live servers and impacted this past weekend's AWC tournament. And given how frail Demon Hunters are right now, they rely on Darkest Hour to survive. So, without this legendary working, Demon Hunters did not see much success over the weekend. There's no doubt that seeing a bug like this impact a tournament means it's a significant one, and definitely warrants this being part of our fails of the week. But we're not finished there, as we've recently come across yet another bug that's not widely reported at the moment. Hunters can actually abuse the Maldraxxus Covenant ability that allows them to survive for a few seconds after dying, the only downside being that they're supposed to die unavoidably after. Well, it turns out that Hunters can actually remove this debuff and continue to survive with their Hunter Legendary Craven Stratagem, which is of course ridiculous. And to round out this week's fails, we've got one more for you. Players have recently come across a bug with the talent Pyroclasm that mages can abuse to deal huge pyroblasts at the start of an arena game. This bug essentially allows a mage to 100-0 someone in a global as their pyroblasts do over 40k damage. This is absolutely crazy and of course needs to be fixed as soon as possible. While all of these bugs definitely need to be fixed as they're incredibly game-breaking, there's still a handful of other things players really want to see dealt with, such as Convoke killing players in a fraction of a second and the infamous MC bug that's ruining the experience for tons of players. There's no doubt that players are craving some good hotfixes right now. And speaking of hotfixes, we've actually seen a handful of small ones this week. First, just after the qualifier matches for this past weekend's cup were played out, Darkest Hour was actually fixed. 
Sadly, it was a little too late for any DH hopefuls trying to make it onto the stage over the weekend. We also saw the shattering throw bug fix. Previously, if the target that it was used on moved out of line of sight after the cast had finished, the immunity would not be removed. So now with this hotfix, it's working as intended and warriors will no longer wonder why their shatter cast went off without the immunity being removed. Overall, it's good Blizzard has been relatively quick to get these hotfixes out, but we're once again missing changes that are needed to balance the game a little better, along with a few other bugs that need to be handled. Alongside others, Waz recently provided an excellent list of things that at least need to be looked at as the majority of our PvP community are openly providing feedback on what changes they would like to see. Still though, we're getting to the point where annoying bugs and abilities that are clearly overpowered are staying in the game for too long without us at least hearing something from the devs. So, while Shadowlands is awesome, we really need more frequent and minor changes, or at the very least, some communication so that we know our voice is being heard. Moving on, we've got a quick update on an old Legend of WoW that has recently returned to streaming in Shadowlands. Along with a few other old school WoW streamers, Athene has also returned to his old self and started streaming regular arenas on his Twitch channel again. He's mostly known for his crazy PvP videos and flamboyant personality and provided a ton of entertainment many years ago. Our top pick has to go to his WoW series where he played a character that returned to WoW to take back his throne in PvP a legendary and fun video series. He recently watched the entire series with his community during a Twitch stream, which provided a ton of nostalgia to those that watched it together. But he isn't just streaming for fun. He's actually trying to get Gladiator, and let's just say he has his own way of playing the game. With all that being said, we're glad to see old school streamers coming back to the game. Next up, some penalties have been given out to players that abuse the Stygia Ma exploit we covered in our last video. As a quick recap, there was a method to infinitely grind Stygia in the Maw, so players could upgrade their conduits to max rank quickly and stock up on sockets. As expected, actions have been taken against these players and their Stygia has been removed, and they also received a reduction to all their conduit ranks on the used character. On top of that, they also received a suspension of up to 7 days. Definitely the right choice, as this method of farming Stygia was very clearly not intended. And last up, WoWhead has released an update to its Twitch extension. The extension now supports Soulbinds and Conduits, giving viewers access to the streamer's characters without needing to visit the official WoW Armory. To enable this extension, the streamer simply has to install it and all their viewers will gain access to their character's build. So, if you're a streamer yourself, or even if you're not, let your favorite streamer know so that they'll head over to the Twitch extension dashboard and search for WoWhead to install it. It's definitely a super handy tool for seeing what's being played by the best players when you check out their streams. Alright, that's going to be it for this week's roundup of PvP news. Stay tuned for next week, but for now, be sure to like the video and hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.